series win in Colorado, but not without losing a key component. Tonight, the scene Cincinnati where the Reds are in the midst of a six game losing streak. Tanner Roark and Alfredo Simon. It's game one from the great American ballpark. If the Nats were looking for support on the road, they have it this weekend. A lot of curly W's here, Screech is here. He's even got the road gray. And we have heard a rumor about racing presidents as well. We'll have to check that out. Bob and FP, welcome to a weekend in Cincinnati featuring great pitching matchups, including Gio Gonzalez and Johnny Cueto tomorrow night. That should be something. I mean, it's like an NLDS type pitching matchups when you look at what's going to happen here this weekend. And look at the ERAs on the right from the Reds pitchers. Don't forget, they play half of their games in a hitter's ballpark. 274, 218, 315. Those ERAs are unbelievable when you see how the ball carries here at Great American Ballpark. It surely is. And one of the reasons the Reds aren't winning, Joey Votto's on the DL, Brandon Phillips on the DL. They're just beat up, haven't been able to score enough runs to go along with that great pitching. Now, Tanner Roark gets the call tonight, and he and Alfredo Simon have met before, and it was a well pitched game in D.C. They locked horns, a 2 to 1 Reds win, but when you look at Simon on May 20, first he had it going on seven innings pitch five hits one run six K's one walk so it was a leadoff home run of the Nard span and that's all the Nats would get all day Tanner Roark pitched fantastic as well he matched him pitch per pitch six innings six hits two runs one earned run he struck out two so a tough luck loss for Tanner Roark but those guys went at it on May 21st at Nats Park and Simon a former American League reliever has been a revelation for the Reds as a double digit win starter right now they won two out of three in that series from the Nats in D.C. So Tanner Roark one of the most steady guys all year. Meanwhile Simon 10th in the league in ERA and fifth in opponents batting average. Well for Tanner Roark it's a key for him to keep the ball down and it's key for the Nats too to not let the Reds think they can play with them. They've lost six in a row out of the All-Star break. They're not swinging the bats. They're not playing good baseball. They're pitching well but so for the Nats same thing as Denver. Same recipe for success. Come out score some runs early and don't let the Reds think they're snapping out of their funk. All right the Nats without Ryan Zimmerman so Jason Worth, Adam LaRoche, Ian Desmond, by the way, further up in the lineup tonight. It's going to be up to these guys to pick up the slack, and Worth has done that. Yeah, Jason Worth is the man right now. He's Mr. July, player of the month last year in July. He's done the same thing this July, and you just have that tendency in this ballpark to swing a little bit too hard at times. The ball will go. It'll carry. It's a warm night, and it's a good place for the offense to keep doing what they're doing. Jason Worth has been amazing in the month of July, hitting 381 in 17 games, 24 hits this month, 17 of them for extra bases. Offense and pitching, we've got it all for you this weekend in Cincinnati.
attendance in the National League, 30,859 a game right behind the Cubs, who are right behind the Nationals. Cloudy evening, so it's quite comfortable here at the Great American Ballpark. Washington Nationals will play their 100th game of the year. And as you look at the schedule, FP, over the next 20 games, three weeks, three here, and then a big taste of the division with Miami, the Phillies, the Mets a couple of times, and, of course, three big ones with the Braves. Nine left against Atlanta total. Yeah, I'm looking at eight, one day at a time. I mean, you got a big series here against the Reds, but when you look at the schedule, there's some teams on there that the Nats have had some success against this year. But as we know, a lot can change in one day, so... You got a big series here against the Reds in Cincinnati and then go from there. Well, the Reds have some significant injuries. Joey Votto left knee. Brandon Phillips is left thumb. They've been out without other guys throughout the season. So right now, Todd Frazier is the guy. They're all star trying to carry the load here, but they're only averaging two runs a game and getting nothing done with runners in scoring position, despite the excitement of Billy Hamilton at the top of that lineup. And their worst start after the all star break was 1991 when they were 0 and 8. They came out of the break a game and a half behind the Brewers. They're now five and a half games back with the baseball they've played since the all star break. Not good. So Anthony Rendon and the Nats with screech in tow. Another one on the road. The Nationals, two out of three at Colorado. Still 25 and 24 on the road this year. To you by our Washington BMW centers and by visit Annapolis.org. Find it here. That batter is out. Hopefully, Tanner Roark will set some down tonight as he makes the start at Cincinnati, taking the mound in a few moments. Tell you about the weather. While you visit trainsearch.com to find your local train comfort specialist dealer, it's hard to stop a train, really hard. 41% humidity. How about that? The same as it was in Colorado on Wednesday. Here we are in Cincinnati. It's under 80 degrees, cloudy skies, gorgeous night. Ian Desmond's on fire, coming off an amazing series against the Rockies when he went 8 for 13 with a couple of RBIs. And so since the end of June, Ian Desmond at 342. Over his last 17 games, 368. Zach Walters in there tonight, and the Nats will face Alfredo Simon. And a fastball from Simon can get up to 95, has some run to it. You can see it right there. But his best pitch for me is his split change. That's his out pitch, 84 miles an hour. And his last start was a 7 1 loss against the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. Gave up four runs on five hits over five innings. Ball game right on time at 7 10, getting started. Span at 282. And a little chopper off the end of the bat that took him forever to get out of the box, making that an easy play for Todd Frazier. 
Bernard comes into this game hitting 355 over his last 19. And this is the tightest defense in the league right here. Well, it's minus Brandon Phillips, gold glove first baseman. Joey Votto, a guy that can really pick it at first base, too. So a little different look for Brian Price's defense, but they can still play a little bit of catch. They have the fewest errors overall in the National League. There's an all star, Devin Mezzarocco, behind the plate. And you want to know why the Nats only got one guy to the All Star game? Cincinnati, a team not in first place or second place, had five players named to the All Star team. Simon took the place of Johnny Cueto. They also had Chapman, Frazier, and Mezzarocco, along with Johnny Cueto. And here's Anthony Rendon, one for one career against Simon. One of the things the Reds like about playing behind this guy. He gets the game moving and keeps it moving. He's been on the attack with a good work rate and throwing strikes. 12 and 4 with a 274 ERA, 10th in the league. And the opponent's batting average only 220, number 5 in the National League. Mark Carlson giving Anthony Rendon a second right there, fouled that ball off his foot. Breaking ball and Rendon out to center with a great swing. Stayed right with the off speed pitch. Oh, there it goes a no hitter. And you see the big curveball right there from Simon. It's a pitch that he can hang from time to time. He threw a 0 2 curveball to Carlos Beltran last time out. He hit it for a home run. In Yankee Stadium, you see Rendon doing a nice job of just staying on that pitch, serving it to center field in a small ballpark, a lot different than Coors Field. It's tough to get hits to drop. There's not a lot of space for base hits here, but there's tons of space for extra base hits and home runs. And Worth up there hacking. Mark Carlson's a 16 year veteran. He's got the plate. Crew chief Jeff Nelson is over at first base, 17th year for him. Toby Basner, Laz Diaz, in his 16th year at second and third. Nats continue to run effectively this year. 53 stolen bases. They've only been caught nine times. And Rendon right in there with the percentage, nine out of ten. Devin Mezzarocco, by the way, 24% throwing out runners. And that's up and in. It gets Jason Worth two on one out. Jason Worth hit by pitch for the sixth time. And that's just a fastball that got away. Not true sink to Simon's fastball, but you saw the run right there. You know, true sink or have the run and go down. His stays on the same plane most of the time. Good chance to score here in the top of the first and not let Simon settle in. Well, Adam LaRoche won for four career with an RBI against him. And the Nats well, going up swinging early. Worth swung at the first pitch. Span and Rendon early in their counts. Simon, by the way, 197th career game, only his 39th start. Well, if anybody's going to hit those pigeons in right center field, it's going to be LaRoche. <laughs> Low and away, and Zach Cozart was in behind Rendon at second base. He had moved about 15 feet from where he is now to right at the bag when that pitch was delivered. Did they just fertilize the grass here? Well, I hope they're not eating fertilizer. <laughs> They'll be belly up in about an inning. We can only hope. I meant seed of, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Bob, they just fertilized, and uh, we'll get back to the pigeons in a moment. Yeah. They'll be a lot more still than they are right now. They'll be decoys in two innings. Well, you know, Adam LaRoche has been known to do a little duck hunting, and he may want to get something done out there. That was 94 on a foul tip and the counts even 2 2. Reds at home 27 and 21. And this is where Simon goes to that split changeup. 
And when it's good, it goes down hard. And when it's not, it just hangs there. And I've seen it hang there. So we'll keep an eye on Tanner Roark's sinker tonight. But I think the split for Simon is the key. There it is. Yep, for the strikeout. 87 miles an hour. It's his 80th strikeout on the year against 29 walks. This is a pretty hard one. He usually averages 84 miles an hour. This one, 87. You see the action, a lot like the Steven Strasburg changeup, down and away hard, and that's his out pitch. He gets you thinking about 95, and then he throws a split, generally speaking, 10 miles an hour slower. Next up, Ian Desmond. By, by the way, the Pigeons are now playing a shift on Desmond. Yep. They're in center field. Now heading to the gap, to playing him to pull. Those are some smart pigeons. Ian Desmond career against Simon, two for seven. Comes in eighth in the league in home runs and fifth in runs batted in. And when you think of pigeons, you usually don't think of smart, but these guys know where to play hitters. Exactly. So add about 12 on to the attendance figure for tonight. That was a curveball that stayed way inside on the front door. One ball, one strike. Nat Stark tonight, fifth in the league in runs. They're seventh in home runs, seventh in batting average at 251. Long look in there. I tell you what, I've never come from Coors Field to Great American Ballpark, but when you come from a spacious outfield like Coors Field and you look at this place, it, it, it feels almost like claustrophobic just looking yeah. at the outfield compared to what we just saw for three days in Denver. There is not a whole lot of room out there, and you know, I've referred to this place as the Great American Small Park before in Arena Baseball, but when you have the reference that we've had coming from Colorado, it's unreal. Well, it is cozier. Course field 345, 351 down the lines. Here it's 328, 325. The gaps not nearly as deep. 404 in dead center, and that's a tribute to Old Riverfront Stadium. It was exactly 404 to the center field fence there. Ballpark used to sit right over on the first base side behind us. 2 2 to Desmond, and Ian stays alive. This ballpark opened up in 03. Has a capacity of over 42,300. And it was interesting about Desmond. He was seven for eight before going one for five in that finale Wednesday at Colorado. Earned himself a slot in the lineup at number five behind LaRoche in front of Bryce Harper tonight. And a good take on a breaking ball. The count's full. And the runners will be on the move. But he saw Rendon. He had notions of stealing third base right there in a 2 2 count. He can be on the move here, obviously, but not a bad idea to steal third base in this park. Especially if Jason Worth gets a read with you. And the reason it's not a bad idea to steal third with two outs is because it's so small and it's tough to score runs on hard hit balls here with two outs. Base hits to the outfield. Outfielders have a chance to throw you out. 3 2 to Desmond. We'll do it again. Anthony got this started with a one out hit, then Worth was hit after the LaRoche strikeout. Ian Desmond looking for RBI number 63 or more, and as mentioned, hitting fifth. In front of Bryce Harper tonight. Ramos seventh and then Walters eighth. And this might be a no sign job here. Go out, tell them what you want to throw. Don't put a sign down. Reds pitching staff seventh in the league at 3.53 overall. 
And as FP mentioned, their starters in this series, some low earned run averages. They've been tough with men on base. Yep, no sign. 3 2 and Desmond right under the runner Worth who jumped over the baseball and a 4 3 puts an end to the top of the first. Nets make Simon work hard and here comes Tanner Roa. Six in a row coming out of the break. 11th in the league in hitting and in runs. Their top six, though, in home runs, and Todd Frazier, their main man. 15 of his 20 here at home. He's fourth in the league, and he also has 54 RBIs. He's 0 for 1 career against Tanner Roark, who faced them back in May on the 21st pitch well, and here's what he brings to the Reds. Well, like Simon with. The split change being a key. The two seam fastball for Tanner Rohr and his command of it, keeping it down key here tonight against the Reds, a team that struggled mightily offensively since the break. Keeps that thing down and runs it on the front hip of lefties. He'll be okay. 20th start of the year for Rohr. Great numbers. 2.91 ERA. We showed you the pitching match just in this series in the open and just doesn't get any better than what you're about to see this weekend from a pitching standpoint. Billy Hamilton. Well, we saw his speed on full display in that three game series against the Nats. But he went 0 for 3 against Tanner. Well, but this he, guy is a game changer when he gets on. He goes, they go. And they're 0 6 out of the break. And he struggled. 5 for 23, 217 average, and a 208 on base percentage since the All Star break. Ryan Price needs him to get on for his team to be successful. Hamilton stole one base in that three game series. He went four for 14, had a couple of RBIs. And Tanner turns one over, 83, foul ball. Batting average at 281 for the rookie. Right side, Adam LaRoche, and everybody's going to be a hurry with, in a hurry whenever the ball's on the ground from that batter. Important first out. Well, check out the defense. Zach Walters getting the start at second base tonight. And everything else pretty much the same. So Matt Williams talking about the rookie and wants to get that pop in there. And Zach, a couple of right-handed home runs this year. At the big league level, didn't do a whole lot from the left side, but he'll get some ABs tonight. And there is opportunity at that position. Well, the reason I like that is you got a kid who is his last 10 games in Syracuse was hot as a firecracker. Sure. You call him up and sit him on the bench for a week, he loses that feel he had in Syracuse. 475 those last 10 games. Four home runs. And he was on a 13 game hitting streak. That ball laced out to left center. Art span just going right with that slicing line drive off the bat. 
of Skip Schumacher. Two outs. That'll bring in Todd Frazier, the All Star. Two seventy three, two thirty four. His first two full years in the big leagues, but he hit 19 home runs each time. Way beyond that this year. In that ball game against Roark, he went 0 for 1 with a pair of walks. Fifteen of his 20 home runs have been right here at Great American Ballpark this year. And after the breaking ball, Tanner went 92 and missed down and in. Out to Shorty and Desmond to the backhand. High throw right to LaRoche's ball cap. And a 1 2 3. Here comes Bryce Harper batting six. Ramos and Walters straight ahead. Games back one year ago tonight, July 25th, at home against the Pirates. It's our Volkswagen moment in history. He went opposite field, red seats. Not too many left handed batters have done that at Nationals Park, and the celebration was on. First ever walk off Tater. He's hit three home runs this year, two since coming back. One career home run against Alfredo Simon. Well, I was talking to third base coach Bob Henley about this before the game. As a hitter, when you're facing elite guys of the league, when you get your pitch, you have to put it into play. If you're sitting fastball and you get it, that might be the best pitch you see the whole sequence. Rice hustling made it close. Todd Frazier had to kind of stop on that ball and wait for it to get to him. Pick any three Nationals game and get a fourth game free plus a new era cap with a summer catch four pack. Visit nationals.com slash summer to get your pack today. Uh, hard to believe for the 25th of July. Matta dudes. It's early in the year for those guys. They can't get enough baseball. They got their new era cap on. They're talking about where the Reds outfielders are playing right now. How they can get a foul ball somehow. And that's loan away to Wilson Ramos, who has faced Alfredo Simon seven times with one base hit.
And the point I was trying to make about getting your pitch carp is when you're facing a guy like Simon, he's going to give you one to hit. And you got to seal the deal on that pitch. If you're looking fastball, Bryce was first pitch, fouled it off. As a hitter, major league hitter, you foul that pitch off, you step out, and you say, uh oh, now I got to battle. Yeah. Even though it's an 0 1 count, you got your pitch. Ramos extending, couldn't get to 94. Five homers and six hits. And this is the ballpark where he planted that foot a couple years ago and the knee blew out on him. That's the sad part of that. But I hope Wilson has the good memories of some of the swings there. I mean, he's a guy. He could put him on the grass in center. He could put him up against the wheelhouse up there. He could go upper deck left field. He's one of the strongest guys in the league. And this is a ballpark where you can reach some interesting places with a long fly ball. Or a line drive to center. Well hit. That scatters the birds. And the Nationals have their second hit. Here comes Zach Walters, who's given us some interesting moments this year. Off the bench, right handed. But he's got three home runs on the year. And he had two in Miami. Wow. One the opposite way in this one. Just <laughs> absolutely murdered. And they were all right handed. This is in Philadelphia, too. But trust me, he's got pop from both sides. We've just seen it from the right side. Yeah. Some kind of contact when that young man connects. So at Syracuse, he was hitting 300 with 38 extra base hits, 15 homers, 48 RBIs. And as FP mentioned, red hot over his last two weeks there. Did get a pinch hitting appearance in Colorado the other day and got that. Two out rally started in the ninth with a bloop base hit. That chopper in the batter's box. Got to be fair to get a force play, but Devin Mezzarocco was playing the baseball. Ramos was up, the Pigeons were in left center. Now Walters is up, and they're in right center. I'm how telling do, you. How do they know? I think they all slept in Mark Wiedemeyer's room last night. <laughs> it's crazy. I've never seen pigeons play a shift. Zach Walters on an 0-2 off-speed pitch strikes out. Two Ks for Simon. Nissan will track it. Well, hitting eighth might be tough for Zach Walters in the regards that he's a free swinger. And yeah, he's gonna run into some pitches hitting eighth, but generally speaking, pitchers don't throw a lot of strikes to the guy hitting eighth because the pitcher's on deck. That might be a tricky spot for him to hit in. He's used to hitting third or fourth in Triple A. So a couple of K's on the board for the right-hander, and that's a strike. To Tanner Roark, who has a base hit against Simon. It was a chopper on the left side of the infield back on May 21st in D.C. Right. I'm not making this up and I'll leave it alone after this. Oh okay. no, there, are they in left center? They're in left center. Which, you know, usually you pay the pitcher the other way, so maybe this is the first time. But they're really switching every hitter. Left center for righties, right center for lefties. Hey, forget New York, forget Chicago. Cincinnati has the smartest pigeons in the United States of America. That's a fastball away, two and one. Simon career 29 and 22. He also has 19 big league saves, 17 of those with the 2010 Orioles. He faced the Nationals in interleague action that year. Takes it right in there. Taken all the way on three and one. Wilson Ramos will be on the move with two outs. Tony Tarasco visits with him for just a moment and now backs away along with Brian Pena. And Roar goes that way, but it's foul.
I'll tell you what, Jay Bruce isn't giving Tanner Roark a whole lot of respect in right field. He is playing some kind of shallow, and Tanner Roark can hit it. That ball was fair right there. It would have been in the corner. There's no way that Bruce can get to that ball just because he's cheating up so far. And Roark puts a charge into one out to center. It'll back up Billy Hamilton. Backpedaling to make that grab. Nationals have had three base runners. They've been played perfectly so far by the Pigeons of Cincinnati. Mark out for his second inning of work. We've talked a lot about Roark's story and how a couple years ago at AAA he lost 17 games. How last year at this time of the year, a little bit earlier than this time of the year, he wasn't even in the rotation at AAA Syracuse. Now in his career, his ERA through 170 plus innings is the best in Nationals history among anyone with that number of innings. This is a guy who has really come a long way in the last couple years. I talked to Roark the other day. He said that a couple years ago he had a friend ask him, if he was going to give it up, the friend said, you've been in the Myers, minors a while now. When are you just going to give this dream up? But Roark told me he never once had a doubt that he'd be pitching here at the big league level. He just needed the opportunity. He got that opportunity when he came over to the Nationals in a trade with the Rangers. He's pitched pretty well to get himself up to the big leagues the last couple years, and he's excelling here, guys, at the major league level since getting called up last August. Well, it's a great story about a guy who spent nearly seven full seasons pitching in the minor leagues for the Rangers and for the Nats who got him from Texas in the Christian Guzman deal way back in 2010 at the trading deadline. You got to think like that, though. If you don't think like that, you, you shouldn't be playing minor league baseball. Your mindset has to be that they're the ones making the mistake, and it's all I need is my opportunity to see what he's done. I had a family member ask me after seven years in the minor leagues if I thought about doing something else. I almost punched him. <laughs> I said, I'm going to make it. But seven years in the minor leagues, that's paying your dues, and it sure is. That's why we're excited every fifth day when he takes them out. Right in there to Ryan Ludwig. At one time, one of the most feared hitters in the league for RBIs. But after some really good days with St. Louis, a lot of injuries in the last few years, toward the late labrum. In his right shoulder last season, playing in his 75th game for the Reds here. And that's a great Roark breaking ball that gets him a swing and a miss. Mercedes Benz will track it. Might have been a change up at 84. Watch the action on it straight down. Mm. Could have been a slider, but they're both the same speed. But Ludwig was way out in front. Yeah, if, if we have a hard time telling up here, yeah, imagine being the hitter. It's a good thing. One two pitch. Goes with the heat and misses with 93. Ludwig faces Roark for the first time. Jay Bruce and Devin Mezzarocco to follow in the Cincinnati second. Had him reaching. 84 for the strikeout. First K of the night. 
four in a row to start the game. Well, this slider with two strikes, that's the put me away pitch. Watch the late break on this. Ludwig way over the top of the pitch. So good late break. And Ludwig saw it all. Fastball change up slider. Thank you very much. Nicely done by Tanner Roa. And now Jay Bruce. By his standards, having a subpar year, but he's been hurt. They're in right center. I don't know what else to say. He had a torn meniscus in his left knee, had surgery early May, was out just a couple of weeks. But unusual to see a guy who had 30 last year at the stage of the season with just 10 home runs. I think you might say Jay Bruce was Bryce Harper before Bryce was. When he was in high school, they estimate that 30 or more scouts were attending every game in which he played. Of course, some had their eye on Bryce a lot earlier and younger than that. But Jay Bruce was certainly a phenom coming out of Westbrook High School in Beaumont, Texas, the same high school as former Nats manager Frank Robinson. 2 2 pitch. Right in there with a fastball. Bruce knew it. Two outs. Well, coming into today, the Reds are hitting 183 since the All Star break. They've scored just 12 runs. They were 35 for 191 coming into this game. And you see the Roark fastball just locking up Jay Bruce. And he is obviously in between fastball and off speed. Guest off speed got the heater. Next up, Devin Mezzarocco. Inside the numbers with Jeep. So since July 25 of last year, third best in all of baseball ERA. Look who he's behind. <laughs> Kershaw and Greinke ahead of Lester. Got a good breaking ball tonight. Retired Devin Mezzarocco all three times. They faced each other back in May. Target in from Ramos. Wasn't exactly where the catcher was set up, but it got all played. No swing, says Jeff Nelson on the appeal. But he got him on the fists just enough. Six straight to start the game for Tanner Roark. Denard Span, second time up. He's homered against Simon this year.
Papa John's. When the Nats win and score seven or more runs, you get 50% off regular menu prices. Online orders use promo code NATS50. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's official pizza of your Washington Nationals. And seven Monday, seven Tuesday. May 21st, leading off the game for the Nats, Denard Span against Alfredo Simon. It was the only run the Nats would get that day. Denard Span, first A.B., broke up the no-hitter, broke up the shutout, and put the Nats on the board. And then Simon settled down, and he would go on to pitch seven innings of five-hit ball. That's the only run he gave up. His only homer of the year, the 28th of his career. And when Denard Span hit that home run, he was eight for 15. In that series, he would go on to a two for four day. So he was the one guy who really kind of wore out the Cincinnati pitching staff in that three game set. I talked a lot about that series that the leadoff hitter is being key. And I think the same goes for this one, although smaller ballpark. I think for the Nats, the thump has to show up. Yeah. Well, the bats quite loud in Colorado quiet until the ninth inning on Wednesday. Made lots of noise there and here they come to Cincinnati. Looks it all the way in and the 88 to strike and Denard thought it might have been low. Well, that's the most animated I've ever seen Denard. Come on man he just he said it. he said no. Real loud. Look at that. Simon, first two innings, 37 pitches, 26 strikes. Had to swing. That was a good breaking ball. Hitters OPS. In 02 counts, 422. Hitters OPS in 1 1 counts, 854. <laughs> so that gives you an idea why Denard Span was frustrated right there. 1 1, 02, big wow. difference. Makes you twice as good a hitter. Absolutely. Crazy. Padres have a run in the first dead at Atlanta. They're just underway. Nationals lead the Braves by a game and a half in the East. You know, there's a way to Carvin. I was, I was talking to Dan about this the other day. To approach umpires when you think they've missed a call, and Bryce Harper's been having some balls called strikes on him because of his body language in the box. If you react a certain way as a hitter, umpires can make it a very long day for you, based on they don't want you showing them up. And there's a way to handle it that's so easy to say up here. And a little bit harder to do down there when you know you have the emotions of the game going. But the veteran guys they'll look down the dirt and you can get away with murder and what you say if you're looking down the dirt. You could say that's horrible. That's terrible. I can't believe you called that a strike. They won't kick you out of the game. But as soon as you jerk your body straight up and look back at them real fast. Now you're showing up home plate umpires. The other three out in the field see it and they can make life really hard on you by calling borderline call strikes. Span guides one up the middle skip Schumacher. And Denard Span ends up beating that out. And it really wasn't that close. He really got down the line. What well, was the double pump that allowed him to score right here? Watch, just putting the ball in play. Nobody does it better with two strikes than Denard Span. And you see the double clutch by Schumacher. And when you have a fast runner, that's all it takes. Watch. Called traveling right here if you're in the NBA. And that's what allowed Denard Span. To get to first, there's one of those defensive differences you alluded to, not having Brandon Phillips. Guys won multiple Gold Gloves at that position. Schumacher, a good second baseman, converted outfielder, but not Brandon Phillips. Here's Anthony Rendon. And maybe Schumacher rushed it a bit, knowing who was running. The Nationals, 53 steals on the year. They've only been caught as a team nine times. There's Anthony Rendon stepping in. So you get back from the umpires pretty much how you direct things to them. Yeah, and, and it's with, this is how you act with your body language. I mean, I've heard guys say whatever they want. 
if they're looking straight down on the ground. And you could say that was horrible. You missed that call. But as soon as you say you're horrible, <laughs> you're gone. You can say that's horrible. That's absolutely horrible. You missed that pitch. As soon as you say you're horrible and you direct it personally toward them, you're gone. Mm. Regardless of where you're looking or what your body language yeah. is like. On that one. You can get away with so much if you just don't show those guys up. But as soon as you pop up, look back at them, and throw your arms in the air, now they feel like you've showed them up. And it, I mean, they'll go two, three, four inches outside and make life really hard on you if you get that reputation. Now, Denard Span never does that, but you know Bryce has done that at times, and Bryce is going to make life really hard on him as far as balls and strikes and borderline calls if he keeps doing that. That was a fastball that didn't miss Rendon's hands by much. I think really had some inside run to it, and the count's even one-one. He's already singled today. Span a pretty short lead, really. Hitting room right side. And Rendon hits that one off the end of the bat. Coming in to grab it, Billy Hamilton. Took him a second to read it. That was a big swing and not that well hit a ball. Legendary country music artist Martina McBride will perform at Nats Park on Saturday, August 16th. Don't miss this last Nats Live postgame concert. That's presented by the Travel Channel free with your national game ticket. Visit nationals.com slash Nats Live for the tickets. That is one of the biggest names to come into Nationals Park. Little book Bill Murray there on the right with his hat on. <laughs> Here's Worth hit by a fastball up and in first time. After he swung at the first pitch, and that's outside. Dan just texted me and said that's the first time I've ever called him Dan on the air. When I was referring to him in the story. <laughs> As opposed to Masson, Dan. Yeah. Trucks tell me they had no idea who I was talking about. Who's Dan? Yeah, never heard of him. Great take by Worth on a pitch that didn't miss by much. By the way, Alex Wood, the Atlanta pitcher tonight, and the Padres got him for a run in the top of the first as they open up a series this weekend. Well, the Marlins tough on the Braves, beat him again last night. I think the Padres get 50% off Papa Johnson when they score one run. So that's a good, good thing right well, now. Well, their fans need a pizza every yeah, once in a while. Absolutely. That's for sure. Haven't they won a couple of games this year when they got one hit? They have. They had some pitching, though, I'll tell you that. He got the A move, did span from Simon that time. That's Brian Pena over at first base, not Joey Votto. You can imagine how good the Reds are when Votto and Phillips are on the right side of that infield. Brian Pena, a guy who can play different positions, including catcher. Two one to Worth. It's been a good at bat so far. And that's ball three. And even the strike was a borderline pitch. There's Brandon Phillips, one of the most animated guys in baseball. If he's on your team, you'll love him. If he's on the other team, uh, sometimes you're a little irritated by him, but he can play some ball. Well, he's supposed to be back September 1st. Mm. He has surgery to repair a torn ligament in his left thumb. Yeah, he went down the, what, the same day Yadier Molina went down in St. Louis, or maybe the day after. Two crippling injuries in that division. It's a good fastball. How good are they? Well, missing an action. Neither one with tremendous numbers, but they kind of feed off each other when they're in there together. Well, it's the second time Joey Votto's been on the DL this year. This is the distal quad strain in his left knee, so right above the knee. 3 2 span, you would think would be running. There he goes. And Worth hits one hard to left. Denard's going to have to put on the brakes. 
he never did get to the bag, so he didn't have to retouch or anything. He stopped just short of the second base bag on a well hit ball by Worth. Two outs. Jason wishing he would have got a little more elevation on this. He took the 3 1 fastball away, and you see the cut fastball right there by Simon. Just stayed right out over the plate. Ryan Ludwig gave a little wrestle out there in left field, made the play, didn't have any chance of throwing out Span once he hit the turf. Two outs now, Adam LaRoche struck out first time. Guarantee you, by the way, Ludwig caught that ball, it was knuckling on him. It was well hit. Jason gave it the uh, little bat flip after that, thought he got it, at least for a double, maybe. And a good take by LaRoche on a breaking ball. It's 1 1. Nationals against the Central this year. Their only losing record in any category. They're 12 and 15. They're winners at home, on the road, against the East, the West, and their 500 in Interleague. Now Span running. He'll get the steal as Devin Mezzarocco drops the ball. And that's number 18 for Span in 20 attempts and number 54 for the Nats. It just seems like he always picks the right pitch to steal on. What is the right pitch? Anything down in the dirt and anything soft. That's the reason his steal percentage is so good. Almost like he knows what's coming and base dealers will tell you they peek in there and if they see the signs, anything besides a fastball will take off. Denard just running great this year. Hitting over 360 now his last 20 games. So last year he stole 20 all season and he's at 18 in game number 100. Simon, meanwhile, his pitch count mounting here. Nats have had some good at bats. Three and one. Now they just need that two out hit to break through. High in the air and slicing out of play from Adam LaRoche. As a base runner with two strikes and two outs, you're going as soon as you see the bat in the strike zone. And Devin Mezzarocco going to come out for the 12th time tonight. <laughs> it's really imperative in smaller ballparks with outfielders closer to you that you really work hard on your secondary lead. Mm -hmm. And that's the shuffle, shuffle, go after you get into your primary lead. Most base runners, like the Nards, man, the good ones, do work hard on that. But it's even more important in small ballparks to really get a Good primary lead. That's right where you stop, right there. And then once the pitch is thrown, to get two long, low shuffles to gain ground in case there's a base hit to the outfield. Adam LaRoche will walk for the 52nd time this year. Two on for Ian Desmond again. Desmond bounced out to second with Rendon and Worth aboard back in the first. Right in there. Well, it just doesn't look like 95, does it? No, nope. so smooth with his delivery. Kind of lulls you to sleep with the mechanics, and the arm comes in fast and jumps on you at 95. He was a waiver pickup by the Reds from the Orioles a couple of years ago. Desmond pulls it, no problem for Frazier. The Nationals have stranded five base runners in the first three innings.
one as we head to the bottom of the third inning. It's been a pitcher's duel just like we told you it'd be. And there's a reason why that guy has an ERA of 291. And he's done a nice job with runners in scoring position of getting out of jams. The Nats have had their chances, but Tanner Roark, like he did the first time they met on May 21st, matching him pitch for pitch. There's a reason why that guy has a 291 and Simon has a 274. So check that. Got them mixed up for a second, but they're both good is the bottom line. And if you're just tuning in, the only thing you've really missed is pigeons. And both ERAs are heading their way down. Here we go, bottom of the third. Brian Pena, 32 year old, switch hitting utility guy who can catch and play first base. He rolls that one over. Zach Walters gets his first touch of the night, seven straight for Roark. Let's have a look at our upcoming schedule brought to you by the Metro Silver Line. It is now open, so look alive. Two more here. It'll be Gio and Cueto tomorrow, Fister and Lados on Sunday. Then it's on to Miami. Jordan Zimmerman, Nathan Evaldi Monday, Strasburg, Henderson Alvarez Tuesday, Tanner back in action against Brad Hand to wrap up the road trip with a rare day game in Miami next Wednesday. Matt Williams ball club 11 over 500 a game and a half up on the Braves. Close ball two. To the shortstop Zach Kozar who is struggling. At 254 last year. Drove in 63 runs. This year he's hitting 227. He hasn't had a hit in his last 14 at bats. Two one. Really Nats catching the Rockies and the Reds at a good time. In this league at this level you need all the help you can get when you're on the road. And he jammed him in a pop up left side. Anthony Rendon came hustling in. Roark went Doug Fister right there to help him if needed. Two outs. Well, the Nats have won seven of their last ten road games. That's dating back to June 28th. That winning percentage 700 is the best road mark in the National League over that time. So Matt Williams squad has been playing good in the great unis. When you're good carp it doesn't matter what time you catch a ball club you should be able to beat them. But it does help if a team's not playing well. It's a good point. Strike to Simon. Who went one for three. With a double against Tanner Roark. Remember that ball he hit it off the scoreboard in right field. His second time up. The way I used to look at it, they're catching us playing well. <laughs> and I don't care what they're doing. Yeah. Two and one. Pretty good cut by the pitcher. And a great catch by a fan down below. First row of the uh, second deck with bare hand on that. Pretty good jamage right there. Here comes Rendon, plenty of time. Nine in a row by Tanner Roark to start off the series in Cincinnati. He'll bat fourth if somebody gets on. And there's Mr. Mets cousin, Mr. Red. <laughs>
No score, 10 in a row, arc outstanding. That's F3 hits for the Achiever and you. Our minor league report from PNC Bank. Steven Sousa Jr., he got called up to the Nets April 27th when Bryce Harper hurt his thumb, and he's doing a great job at Syracuse. Wow, look at the numbers, hitting almost 360. He and Zach Walters must have been something in the same lineup together, huh? You'd think that Mike Rizzo's answering a lot of phone calls about that guy this time of year. You know he is. Still just 25 years of age. I know it pains all of you to see the P on the bottom of the National League East standings. That's where it stands right now. Braves are at home tonight, trailing San Diego early. The Phillies have a lead. And we're going to the top of the fourth with Bryce Harper. 11 and 5 in July. I'll get you to first place. Phillies 3 0 at home over Arizona. The Mets are at Milwaukee in a little while. And Miami's at Houston. Bryce went back to his old stance. Did you see his first time up? A little uh, more flex in the knees. Watch. Went 0 for 4 with three Ks last game in Denver, and he's kind of back to his old stance. Well, actually, different from the first time up. Hammers a base hit to right. The Nationals have a hit in each of the first four innings. And that would be the second leadoff single in a row. So Bryce now 10 for 28 in 10 games back. That's a little different from the first time up. First time up he went back to his old stance. He grounded out to third base. And I mean old stance the one he used before the all star break when he came back and stood straight up that somewhere in the middle kind of a modified between. Old and new, whatever it was, it worked. It's a base hit. Wilson Ramos hammered a line drive to left center first time up. Simon misses up high. And worthy to note that Alfredo Simon has already thrown 62 pitches. And that one really hit Mark Carlson hard. He might walk around and give himself a little time got after that. Can fix his collar. Wow. Sixteen year veteran behind the plate. Perfect fastball. 93 outer edge. Simon's a big guy, 6'6, 267. 33 years of age. He went six and four for the Reds. Three and two the year before that, but that was in a combined 99 appearances out of the bullpen. Matt Latos got hurt this year. They made him a starter. He's never looked back, and neither has Cincinnati. Lados will pitch here on Sunday. Ramos goes the other way with a pitch away. He's had two great at bats tonight and serious contact each time. First time the Nats have two hits in an inning. That's just a nice piece of hit and why watch how deep he lets the ball get with two strikes. That's just reactionary right there. Just putting it in play. You tell yourself as a hitter fastball adjust you're looking for the hardest pitch a pitcher has you try to adjust anything soft he was on the fastball and. Just a beautiful piece of hitting by the Buffalo right there and. First and second nobody out for Walters Ramos batting 306 now with those two hits. Simon got ahead of Walters first time and then struck him out on a pitch in the dirt. Matt Williams can always tinker with Ramos. You remember opening day, he was their cleanup hitter. And with Ryan Zimmerman out for an extended period with the hamstring, if he gets hot, look for him to yeah. take cuts. Maybe get up there in the fourth or fifth slot. And a throw high over the runner as Mesoraco tried to tuck one in behind Bryce Harper. Well, there was a moment of hesitation by Bryce, and it wasn't because he was thinking he was thinking about going to third just for a split second, and he got back easily. 
He'll do that. He'll set catchers up, get out there, and when they throw behind him, go the other way. And still wearing the mitt to protect the left thumb. 1 1 pitch, and Walters takes the off speed. Well covered by Mezzarocco. No score, the Nats looking to bust on top here in the fourth. They've had five hits. And a high fly ball that will reach the seats. Inside the numbers with Jeep, toughest guys to hit with runners in scoring position. A teammate and three other really tough pitchers ahead of Alfredo Simon. When we do our graphics, they just kind of put C. Kershaw at the top of every table and fill yeah. in the rest. You just put that in automatically, but hey, that's why the, you know, the good ones turn it up a notch when there's runners out there in scoring position. The Maddox was a different guy when he had guys on second and third. He went from 88 to 92, 93. Zach Walters, right field line, hooking away from Jay Bruce. The Nats have the lead with Harper scoring. Ramos to third, and Zach Walters checks in with his fifth RBI of the year. A big inning building for Washington. Nice Harper getting some high fives in the third base dugout, and that's take a one nothing lead. And that's why Matt Williams put Zach Walters in the lineup today. He wanted him to stay hot. And he does. Clutch double right here by the rookie. Just kind of goes out and hooks the split. And split off speed. Just kind of dumps it into right field. Perfectly placed to get the Nats on the board. Here's Tanner Roark with the infield in. Tanner, five hits this year. Nine in his career, one RBI. And a great chance to double that. Well, the reason he's not bunting right here is because of the runner on third base. You got wheels on third base, you can push one to first, but with Ramos, he's swinging. And Tanner had his feet all over the place on that swing. By the way, that was Zach Walters first extra base hit this year. That's not a home run at the big league level. First double. You don't want to get too carried away after one double, but if, if he gets hot. You know teams that end up winning championships always have something they really don't see coming and don't expect manifest themselves and he could be that guy. He Roll has potential down on strikes. Third game for Simon but now he has to deal with Denard Span. Well right now you're waiting for somebody to say I really want that second base job. So Zach Walters gets hot. That may make Mike Rizzo's life a lot easier too. Well, you don't have a whole lot of time to get out. That's the only thing. <laughs> you got a week. <laughs> <laughs> but if you swing the bat well for a week, you've sent a message to your GM and your manager that, hey, I was ready for big league pitching this time around. You know, first time up with the big club this year, Zach went three for 25 left handed. There's Spam with a base hit. Ramos will score. Walters racing to third. Henley holds him. Span gets in a rundown. And that's not going to help anything. Because Walters was frozen at third. It's two nothing, but now two down. And I think your point about a smaller ballpark you made earlier plays. Well here because that ball comes back in in a hurry. I here. guarantee if you go down there and ask Denard Span right now why he rounded first base so far, he thought that Bob Henley was going to send Zach Walters. Zach Walters got a good read. What Denard forgot to take into account is it's such a small ballpark that Bob Henley couldn't be Bob Senley and he had to keep Walters at third base. Span was trying to draw a throw because he thought, watch Walters at the top of the screen. Little hesitation right there. He was coming hard to Bob Henley, but he had to hold him. Spam thinking that throw was going to go to the plate. Gamble. And look at this. Rendon will get the Nats a two out run. Three nothing Washington. Anthony Rendon delivers. RBI number 55. So Span and Rendon each have two hits. 
And the Reds pitching coach. Jeff Pico needs to come out and visit Alfredo Simon who's given up five hits in this inning. Well the Reds are averaging two runs a game since the All Star break and right now there's a lot of guys in white unis thinking uh oh and Anthony Rendon keeping the line moving. Second hit of the night for Rendon. And drops it in front of Ryan Ludwig for an RBI single. Sometimes the barrel's overrated and. I'm looking at the hits. Bryce hit his on the screws. Ramos hit his on the screws. Zach Walters off the end. Spanned his well. Rendon off the end. Here's Jason Worth, who hit the daylights out of the ball last time, but lined out hard to Ludwig and left. So right now, Alfredo Simon not fooling any of the Nationals. Worth the seventh man to bat this inning. I'll tell you what, I don't care how the Reds' offense is going. Three runs ain't enough in this ballpark. <laughs> You're hoping it is with Tanner on the mound, but you hear guys in the dugout say, let's go, never enough. Best clutch hitter lately, worth. Well, Span delivered his 21st RBI, Rendon his 55th. So the first two guys in the lineup are four for six tonight. And Worth will go out to right field for Jay Bruce. Great inning for the Nats. They pick up three runs on five hits despite losing a base runner and taking command in the fourth. And modified in between, and we're going to show you the difference between first time up, if feet a little farther apart there, a little narrower there. Check out the hands first time up, check out the hands second time up. So he's figuring it out. You know, it's a feel thing, and I think the luxury for an everyday player is you get those at bats to feel your way through. So first time up, he grounded out. Second time up, kind of in between the stance we saw with his hands lower and his hands higher. You got a base hit a second time up. So you know, Carp, that, that was the advantage you have as a hitter from a player standpoint. When you play every day, you can make adjustments yeah. like that yeah. at bat to at bat. When you're a guy that plays once a week off the bench or a pinch hitter, you don't have that luxury. And Bryce is a field guy, and he's still trying to feel his way through this. Well, that hit led to a three run inning. Here's Billy Hamilton. Bounced out to LaRoche, first time up. That's Tanner Roark's 38th pitch. Just missed. Yeah. 
Billy Hamilton, as I mentioned earlier, hitting 281 on base percentage of 312. He's second in the league in steals with 40. D. Gordon of the Dodgers, 45. Tanner's retired him four times in a row this year. Here's a 2 1 pitch. Got the call on the fastball. Inside edge. Nissan will track it. That's the front hipper, and if he's got this one going on, heads up. I mean, just running it back. Billy Hamilton gives up on it, comes back for a strike. Throw it again. Try. Well, you want to make Hamilton earn his way on. Well, you walk him, it's a triple. <laughs> Make him swing the bat here. He breaks it. Desmond! I thought he was going to get there. What a great effort. And then the ball dropped momentarily by Harper, but Hamilton, down by three, stays at first. Ian Desmond covered a serious amount of ground right there. Stay down for a while. We'll see if he's okay. He seems to be shaking it off. But yeah, where we're sitting, he was tracking this. And you notice how Anthony Rendon stays in with two strikes. The Nats have done that against Billy Hamilton every single game this year because of his speed. The third baseman, whether it's Ryan Zimmerman or Anthony Rendon, has stayed on the grass with two strikes. Maybe if Rendon was back, which you really can't be against Hamilton, he has a chance, but a great effort mm. by Ian Desmond nonetheless. Wow. So a bloop base hit. The first for the Reds tonight, Skip Schumacher next. That that a hero broke up a no hitter. It's a pretty good matchup, runner and catcher. And of course, Roark has to get it there quickly. But Wilson Ramos right now, 48% this year, 11 for 23. Pitching staff giving him a chance. Yeah. Could be tough. This guy decides to go. I mean, he has been thrown out though. He is 40 for 55. So thrown out 15 times this year. And they're down by three. Saw something during the break card. Speaking of thrown out, Denard Span hasn't been thrown out by a catcher this year. He's been picked off twice. So he's 18 for 18 stealing. And if you get picked off, obviously it's a caught stealing. So that guy right there. Hasn't been thrown out by a catcher all year. <laughs> and now, since the Reds got a hit, I can say hi to Dylan Roark and all the boys at the corner tap in Wilmington, Illinois. It's become a tradition for a Tanner Roark start. They're all there and they sent me a picture and they're having a good time. And it almost makes you wish you were there. <laughs> I wasn't going to say hi to him until they got hit. Yeah. Duo can't let the runner distract you from getting the hitter. And Tanner gets a strike. That'll make it two and one. I mean, you are up by three runs. Billy Hamilton cannot tie the game. Holding. Great change up. 82 to the corner. But see, you can't sit on a pitch against Roark. 2 1. I'm sitting fastball, right? Boop. Change up on the corner strike. I mean, what are you looking for? You just don't know what's coming. And it's a 2 2 count. And he did get a generous call there. But he's been around the plate. And a 2 2. By the way, the Reds, thanks to Hamilton, have stolen the second most bases in the league. 85 to the Dodgers, 91. But their percentage, not that great. 34 caught stealing. Hamilton, 15 of those. Holding again. And Schumacher pops it up. Ramos finds it. Ejects the mask. Didn't have to go too far for the first out. 
Just a reminder, as you enjoy a cold one at the corner tap, to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game. That's brought to you by Miller Light. You, all you Roarks out there watching the ball game. I thought they'd be having some iced tea on a Friday night over there. Yeah, probably not. One on one out. Todd Frazier, the hitter. Here, look. That's, that's, yeah. a, that's a picture. That piece showed me the picture. Awesome. Looks like a fun bunch. You guys look great. We wish we were there with you. But technology has not advanced that far just yet. Yeah. And we'll let you all know the final score because you ain't going to remember it. <laughs> and besides that, we have to be able to hear ourselves. Todd Frazier bounced out to Ian Desmond. First time up. Runner goes. Ramos couldn't handle it. That's number 41 for Billy Hamilton. He had a bad jump. Ramos had a chance. He just tried to rush because he knew he was running. And he knew who was running. But there was a little hesitation in the jump. Watch. Well, he didn't get a good one. Couldn't see it right there. And Ramos with a good throw had him. That was not a good jump. And I think he just saw why he gets thrown out. There was a little hesitation, a little pause, and then he went. Sometimes he can outrun a bad jump, but that time Ramos had a chance. Pitch was a strike. And then a pretty good breaking ball had Frazier fouling it off to the right side. And the count so too. Well, Todd Frazier paid his dues for a while, five plus years in the minor leagues. He's 28 years of age and made his first all star team. Roar goes right after him. Hamilton to third. Desmond to LaRoche, two outs. That'll bring in Ryan Ludwig for a righty righty matchup here. Ludwig has made stops in San Diego and Pittsburgh since his good days in St. Louis. He was a favorite of Walt Jockety over there. The St. Louis GM then, now Reds GM, brought him in here. And he's been banged up. Check swing. Oh, Roark deflects it. Rendon rather Walters a chance. And it gets away from LaRoche. Well, Tanner Roark went for the ball. If he missed it, Walters would have been able to get him. And the Reds will pick up a run on Ryan Ludwig's 900th career hit. Billy Hamilton's speed, the stolen base pays off for the Reds. Well, excuse me, swing by Ludwig, and you can't really blame Tanner Roark. The guy fields his position as good as any pitcher in baseball, and he's going for it. We see to make this play before, just. Sold out. Great effort by Roar. Great effort by Walters. And I think the throw got on Adam LaRoche a little quicker than he expected. Pretty good play by Zach Walters right here, shuffling the ball to LaRoche. It was just he was so close. There was no time to react. Well, a bloop and a check swing off the pitcher's glove with a stolen base, the extent of the Cincinnati offense against Tanner Roar. Here's Jay Bruce who struck out looking first time. Laces one to left and Harper's got a ways to go. Bryce is there. Inning over. Limiting the damage. Tanner Roark pitching well through four with a 3-1 lead.
other ballparks like Pittsburgh. They've raced against the pierogies. They've raced against the Oreo bird, but never on their own on the road. And you know, one of them's from Ohio. Not just Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio. And I wonder who. And that's a little dirty pool by Ohio native William Howard Taft. He was born right here where this ballpark is, and he ate all the chili in Cincinnati, as you can see by his boiler. And I'd like to say the crowd went crazy, but they really didn't. Yep. Kind of did. But I think they applauded Bill like he made a two foot putt for bogey. They're just still taking it all in. I think they're in shock. Here's the top of the fifth. I mean, rosy red racing or the, the presidents. I'll take the presidents. Eh? Adam Maroche, by the way, 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout tonight. A little fun on the road. Nice to see the guys here. That is good looking for the Nats. It's slicing away for the left fielder, Ryan Ludwig. And heading to his 13th double of the year is Adam LaRoche. He told me when he hits a ball the other way, it's a mistake. He's looking right down the middle. If it's in, he's going to pull it. If it's away, he's just swinging and the ball goes that way. So, but it, it, the reason it's a mistake is because his feet are in the right position consistently this year. Giving him the opportunity to fire his hands away or pull him in. If your feet are underneath you and your foot's not down, you don't have that luxury. Nice swing right there by Nats first baseman. Here's Desmond 0 for 2, couple of ground balls. If there's one thing the offense has done a very good job of lately, it's getting runs back right after the Nats give up a run or two. Their pitching staff doesn't give up very many big innings. But they've done a good job of having the answer. Desmond will go right up the middle. That'll move the runner. Cozart better hurry. And Desmond out on a rather close play. Adam LaRoche to third base with one out for Harper. Well, I thought Ian Desmond could have beat that. Cozart double pumped. And Ian Desmond did a nice job of moving Adam LaRoche to third base. But, you know, as I was watching this, I was wondering if Ian. Still feeling something from that dive he made on that fly ball. Exactly. Because we've seen him go faster than this. Right. Watch right here. He just kind of says, okay, I'm cruising. And if he puts his head down and goes right there, he beats it. And we know that guy of all the Nats, besides Ryan Zimmerman, hard 90 every single time down to first base. So, yeah, keep an eye on that. Yeah, we're not calling him out. We're just saying no. that's not his usual trip. The, the opposite. We, he doesn't do that unless something's going on. That's all. So heartbreaking ball inside to Bryce Harper. The Reds get their bullpen working. Here in the fifth inning as the Nationals have nine hits. Great chance for Bryce to get RBI number 13. And a check swing. Did he go? He did, says Laz Diaz. Good reaction by Bryce. Didn't really show any emotion right there. Just shook his head like, yeah, I'm there. They have six right handers. JJ Weaver, one of their veteran guys. Two lefties. And on the off speed, another good smother by Devin Mezzarocco. Well, I'd be surprised if they give Bryce anything to hit right here, but the reason they may go after him is because the guy on deck has two line drive singles. Yeah, you might say, well, yeah, get Ramos for a double play. Not that easy the way he's swinging. And Harper unable to get to that 90. Got to get contact now. The count goes to two and two. Just adding and subtracting from his fastball. That was the cut fastball right there by Simon. Didn't do a whole lot. But when you just see 193 and then he takes a little bit off there, three miles an hour on the 90, Harper a little out front. It's 2 2 pitch. And a good take by Bryce. Count goes full. Right, I'm surprised. He must not be feeling that split change because that was the count to do it right there. 
either not feeling it or didn't want to throw it. The runner on third. And his catcher has shown the ability to block pitches tonight. Might throw it here in a 3 2 count. Let's see. Nationals lead 3 to 1. With a big opportunity to add on here in the fifth. I would not throw Bryce a fastball right here, but let's see what they do. He went 90, and Bryce Harper takes the walk. Not one of the most patient hitters in the league. And here comes the manager, not the pitching coach. And he was out of the dugout as soon as ball four was called. Good at bat by Bryce. That's not an easy take right there in the cut fastball at 90. So Brian Price not feeling it on behalf of his starting pitcher, and the Nats are into the Cincinnati bullpen halfway through the game. Alfredo Simon gone with one out in the fifth inning. One of the better starters in the league this year, and the Nats have him out of the ballgame. We invite you to participate. It's the Harris Teeter Food Drive, benefits the Capital Area Food Bank, and Nationals Park August 2 and 3. When the Phillies are in, you donate three or more cans of food. You can receive a pair of tickets for an upcoming game while supplies last. First 1,000 fans to donate. Harris Teeter private label cans will also receive $5 in Nats bucks. 202675 Nats to check it out or visit nationals.com slash tickets. Here's J.J. Hoover in his 36th appearance. High, high ERA 5.36. Yeah, fastball 93, but it's straight. It doesn't sink it. It's a four seam fastball. It seems like to me Brian Price is going for the strikeout versus the ground ball. And by the way, Wilson Ramos won for two career against him with a home run. A short little slider to go with that four seam fastball in the low 90s. LaRoche doubled. He's at third after the Desmond ground ball, and then Harper walked. And you never know when the Nats might start Bryce Harper with one out to try to make something happen. Oh, Ramos got a pitch right there. Yep, and it went straight back. A sign that he was. Just about on it. He's raised his batting average up to 306 with two singles tonight. And both of them have been barreled. Off speed. Got the foul ball. Strike two. Nats made Simon throw 89 pitches. 
to get 13 outs. Ramos gets jammed. It's over by the Cincinnati dugout. Pena has room and a big second out for the Reds. It'll be up to Zach Walters. All right, you know the drill. Using hashtag Masson fan photos, tweet us your photo and you'll have a chance to show it in the game tonight. Well, we'll show that one in a future broadcast. It's brought to you by AT&T. I'm told that it takes a minute for them to get you sending them to us and then it to be put on the air. So otherwise, we would have just shown the corner tap. Well, not just any, yeah, not just any photo gets off the row arcs. Zach Walters has already made an impact tonight with an RBI double. That breaking ball coming in toward him, and he was out ahead. Where you get that first knock under your belt, you know, of your second time up this year. And I feel a little more relaxed at the plate. Let your true ability take over, not pressing. You got something to show. Yeah, he got that blue pit in Colorado. Now he's got an RBI double. Two for three since coming back. And that was a fastball right down the middle. The guy's been put, putting up some of the biggest numbers in the organization over the last couple of years. 29 homers, 77 RBIs last year. Three and eight when the Nats called him up in eight games in September. Looked like he held. I don't think this was close. Walters strikes out. Hoover does the job. Overpowers Ramos, strikes out Walters, and it stays a 3 1 game in the fifth. of work a run on two hits so far first half champion Potomac Nationals back in Woodbridge through July 30th all week Friday Justin Bieber demolition night fireworks all weekend long there's a family camp out night come down and see the future Washington Nationals all summer long 703 590 2311 for regular season and playoff ticket information Devin Mezzarocco, Brian Pena, Zach Cozart. Tanner in four innings, 54 pitches, 32 strikes.
Gets it on the hands of the Cincinnati catcher who flied to left first time up on a similar pitch that was up a little. The Padres now lead at Atlanta for nothing against Alex Wood and the suddenly struggling Braves. It's a great slider there. 0 2. Did you see Mark Grant the other night at Wrigley Field do his best Harry Carey? No, I didn't see that. He'd take me out to the ball game. It was really good. So the Cubs had him over in their booth to do that? Uh huh. Wow. And he did his Harry Carey. And it That's was an honor. Spot on, as good as I've ever heard. Six, seven, eight for the Reds here in the fifth. And Roar pulls the string beautifully. 82 on the change. Third strikeout tonight. Mercedes Benz will try to hit this. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're facing Tanner Roark and you're guessing, he's got you right where he wants you. Against guys like Roark, you have to sit in zones. You you have to look either in, either away, either up, either down. Because if you try to think along with Tanner, that's exactly what he wants you to do because he rarely throws what you think is coming. Brian Pena way out ahead on 73. With guys like that, you just say, okay, I'm looking away. Uh, and I'm not sitting on a pitch. Yeah. I'm just looking away. And anything out there, curveball, changeup, fastball, I'm going to be on it. And I'm looking for the hardest pitch away, and I will adjust to everything else. You have to sit in a zone. Guys like Maddox would love if you tried to guess with them. Because that's exactly what they wanted you to do. You just fall right in the trap. Go ahead, try to guess with me, and you're going to guess wrong. It's a swing and a foul tip. Strike two. Pena bounced out to Walters. First time up. See, I was guessing fastball in my brain right there. It was a changeup. I was. And you did well to foul it off on <laughs> No, that would not have happened. Great right crowd tonight. Right now, if I'm getting in, I'm thinking front hip fastball. All right. Breaks his bat with 92, and Walter's there to grab it. Two down. With more on Zach Walters, here's another young man, Mass and Dan. Bob, you guys mentioned how this is Walter's first career start at second base. Played shortstop and third base coming up through the Nats minor league ranks. And he, he said earlier today that the biggest difference for him playing second, other than just everything being backwards, being on the right side of the infield, is that his momentum on balls up the middle takes him away from first base. And he said that as a big infielder, he kind of relies on his momentum to get the ball over there. So he's going to need to adjust to that on turning double plays, having to shift his momentum a little bit. A quick note on Walters, he's now made four starts at the big league level, four different positions in those starts. Shortstop, third base, left field, and now second base. And let's talk trading deadline 2010 2011. The Nationals got Tanner Roark from the Rangers. And then a year later, they got Zach Walters for Jason Marquis at the deadline from Arizona. Two of Mike Rizzo's finest deals. One ball, two strikes now. It's Zach Kozart, the shortstop. Well, the biggest adjustment he's going to make is have to make is just the double play turn itself. And. You know, at shortstop, you see the runner in front of you. You're blind at second base. You can't see him coming. You have to feel for the runner, and that takes a long time to figure out. If you can hit, they'll find a place for you. And if you can pitch tonight, your name's Tanner Roark. Five great innings. Zach and the Nats with Tanner in control, leading 3-1.
Looking for more here in the top of the sixth inning. Wilson Ramos doing his thing. Zach Walters, a nice job with his first career double and an RBI to boot. And let's go back to the fourth inning and see how they did it. Bryce Harper, knock. Wilson Ramos, knock. Zach Walters, a double, nicely placed. That scored Bryce Harper. And then Denard Span, a little lean you to right field. That scored Wilson Ramos. Span went too far. He got thrown out. And then Anthony Rendon dumps one into left field. And that's the three run fourth inning. There's Tanner Roark leading off. It was a great job by J.J. Hoover to get Ramos and Walters with first and third. One out to keep the Nats from getting their three run lead back. Nice hook, Frisbee's in, strike two. And Tanner will take a seat. Second K by Hoover. Top of the order now, Span and Rendon. You know, Denard's value, we've talked about a bunch, you know, in center field, the way he gets to everything. But I think you're starting to see his true value as a leadoff hitter on this ball club. The Nats offense is a swing and miss offense. They have a lot of guys that swing and miss. Denard Span becomes even more important because he's one guy that, as he swings and misses on two, <laughs> that puts the ball in play consistently. Never swings and misses with two strikes, though. Well, his swing and miss percentage is the lowest in the National League. When he swings, he makes contact. Ben Revere is second. Two for three tonight, batting 285. And he's going to be three for four. By the way, he's back where he needs to be because Denard coming into the season, career batting average 283. So he has his 36th multi hit game of the year. That's two behind Hunter Pence. Just want to flash back about what, two months when everybody was saying, Matt Williams, have you thought about taking Denard Span out of the leadoff spot? And he said, no. It would be a panic move. The guy knows what he's doing there. Yeah. His value is as an all around player and how he plays center field, can steal a base, get on base. And that's why Matt Williams is the manager and we're not. He is, it would have been a panic move, I think, if he'd have taken him out of the leadoff spot. Anthony Rendon looking for a three hit night. Although, just for the record, I thought that was a silly question to ask him. Yeah, early in the season. Lead off then, once again in June, Span was hitting 284. So he's beyond that, a season high 287 with that base hit. Rendon started, looked like he stopped. Jeff Nelson agrees. Dangerous count, 2 0. Oh. The Nats have been pretty relentless with the offense tonight. They haven't had a single inning without a hit. Only frustrating thing is they've stranded eight. Put some hits together for that very nice three run fourth inning. Span right in the middle of everything with three hits in his 18th steal. Three and oh on Rendon with Worth next. So Denard Span's swing and miss percentage is 8.6. Wow. And that leads the majors. So when he swings, he usually makes contact more than anybody in the big leagues. Ben Revere 9.1. And when you have a bunch of guys that do swing and miss, that becomes even more important, especially at the top of the order. That's pretty impressive. 92 swings out of every hundred contact. I'm sure he'll tell you that's a bad thing sometimes when you know. You get fooled on a pitch and you put it in play and you wish you would have swung through it. So the at bat continues with less than two strikes. But it's worked so far. Way outside he threw him a curveball on three and one. And Anthony Rendon with Denard Spana combined six times on base. Well, that's the span effect on first. He rushed through that delivery. Every pitch to Rendon could throw a strike. Well, here's a number we've been waiting to lay on you tonight. Jason Worth, 322 with runners in scoring position. So 
the top of the order on base six times with five hits. Wilson Ramos having a multi hit game. And then RBIs from Walters, Span, and Rendon. So here's Jason Worth hitting over 380 coming into this game in July. And it's the 25th day of the month. You see how Hoover's speeding up? He went slide step right there with an arc span on second base. He's been rushing his delivery. He can't throw a strike. He's got a good base runner out there, and that's why. It's the advantage of hitting behind a true base stealer. You can get in some good counts. Breaking ball misses. 3 and 0 on Rendon, and now 2 and 0 on Worth. Pretty good pitch right here. Worth lays off. Nasty curveball straight down. And mm. Worth gets the benefit when you're not throwing strikes, you don't get the borderline calls. 0 for 2, hit by a pitch in the first. 2 and 1. That one could have gone either way. Twenty six year old right hander J.J. Hoover 69 games last year. And trying to get that ERA done appearing in his 36 game this year. And a big rolling breaking ball falls in there. Counts even. Reds have their bullpen busy again pitcher spot due to lead off in the bottom of the sixth. Span at second, Rendon at first, one out. That's trying to get to that magic number four. Word made an offer. Looked like he held, and he did. Counts full, three and two. Let's see if Matt Williams starts both runners. You, you got a guy that's throwing strikes for the most part. His misses haven't been that bad. You got two good base runners out there. You're up by two runs. This is a perfect time to start both runners. A lot of managers would. We'll see what Matt does. Big part of that, it's July, and Jason Worth is holding a bat. They will hold. He got a hanging breaking ball, and out ahead of it, he was. Broke his bat. The only reason he's holding the runners is because Hoover is so quick to the plate. He's a 1 1 to home with a runner on second base, and that's as quick as I've seen all season. Interesting. Worth didn't want either of the bats the bat boy brought out, and Ian Desmond tossed him the one he's going to use. Ian Desmond does everything in that dugout. One out, two on, three two pitch. And Worth goes to right, hit it off the end of the bat. Jay Bruce has it, got a great arm. Span back to second, two outs. Worth 0 for three as we pass the nine o'clock hour into it. And Adam LaRoche will be the hitter. He's walked and doubled, Bob FP and Dan. With you here at Great American Ballpark, Cincinnati. 3 1 Nets. Each team scoring in the fourth. Trying to get to that magic number four. Adam LaRoche career against J.J. Hoover 0 for 2. 46 and 4 when they score four runs or more. Unbelievable number. Rare loss last game. Yeah, against the Rockies. Yeah. LaRoche up the middle with a two out hit. Here comes Span. The Nationals have their three run lead back as Adam LaRoche delivers his second hit tonight. RBI number 52. Huge. <laughs> And Denard Span had to boogie because it was hit so hard. He got the curveball right out over the plate, lined it right back up the middle. Look out. And Billy Hamilton has a decent arm, but with the speed of Span, he decides to go to third base in the fourth run of the night for the Nats. And we just told you why it's important. Here's Ian Desmond, who's 0 for 3. He's 2 for 6 career against Hoover with a home run.
Mark Carlson likes that outside corner and a good fastball right to it. The Nationals with 11 base hits. And that was a breaking ball that Desmond had to reach for. Billy Hamilton puts it away. Washington has stranded 10 already, but they've scored four to lead by three. All four of his strikeouts. It's been with a variety of pitches here tonight, and you know, he's kept the Reds guessing, and they've been guessing wrong for the most part. So curveball, then a fastball. And a little change up right there to Devin Mezzarocco, and then he goes fastball upstairs to Zach Kozart. So using all his pitches in any count, and the Reds are off balance. DC area Toyota dealers want to help children and their families by making a donation of $37. To the children's in at NIH for every strikeout by a Nats pitcher this season. Tanner Roark will face a pinch hitter. This is rookie outfielder Christopher Negron. Called up this season after hitting 269 at Louisville. Some would say Louisville. With three home runs, 25 RBIs, and nine stolen bases. They got him from Boston a couple of years ago in a trade for Alex Gonzalez and then re signed him as a minor league free agent. Antenna Roark, seeing him for the first time, goes up and in. Negron has a pinch hitter, one for two with a solo home run. I think the Reds should move their Triple A team to Paducah. <laughs> no, there is no speculation about the pronunciation of that. And this would be. Eight as in Denard Spann making the catch. So Roark battles back. That's five in a row since the infield scratch RBI hit. Alfredo Simon went 0 for one. Now in the grown batting at his spot. And the only two hits for the Reds are Billy Hamilton bloop and that Ryan Ludwig dribbler off the glove of Roark. I mean, you have a broken bat single where the bat shattered and Ian Desmond almost had it on a fantastic effort. And a check swing, excuse me, infield single by Ryan Ludwig or Tanner Roark would be perfect. Yeah. That's how good he's pitching. Hamilton shows bunt and hits it straight down. It was his flare leading off the fourth where they stolen base one out later that led to the Reds' run. Roark, by the way, in five innings, 67 pitches. 42 strikes, just great command tonight. Hamilton to left. Harper! Yes, by Bryce. Great read to the backhand side. And the infield celebrating on that one is Desmond and Roark both have their hands up. And Bryce Harper a little slow in getting up. It was his left thumb. 
Remember, it's his top hand. We watch him put the mitt on his left thumb all the time. That's the surgery he had. And he felt something there. And the trainers yeah. are coming out. Matt Williams, Lee Coons. I'll tell you what, I talked about that injury that I had the same one as Bryce Harper. I did it diving for a ball in the infield. I just don't see his hand hitting the ground there, do you? It, it looked like it slid it, it, through pretty well. I didn't see the thumb it's, catch. It's not like it's stuck. He felt something. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Hopefully the impact of hitting the ground and not anything extending that thumb. And I, I'll tell you what, being in his shoes before, he could have just scared him. You, you know, when you come off a of surgery and, you know, it's never 100% for about a year. You see right there, just that, yeah, good call. Just rolled on the grass for a second. And probably felt something there, scared him, and it's back to where it was before. Tell you, that's a great play with Billy Hamilton. You don't make that play. It's three bags or an inside the park home run. Great jump, great route, great effort. Two outs. Skip Schumacher, the hitter. But it's not really a coincidence. When Tanner Roark is pitching, there's good defense behind him. You're ready. He's got everybody ready. And he throws the change up in there behind in the count. Like it's nothing to even the count. Out of play left side. Looking around the scoreboard still for nothing San Diego at Atlanta they're in the fifth inning now. Remember San Diego's got a good bullpen so that, that, that's a big four runs. It is San Diego. One of the top bullpens in all of baseball. The Mariners are first with a 2.38, and the Padres are second with a 2.60 ERA. Three balls, two strikes. Oh, and your Nats are third, by the way, with a 2-6-1. Got to go after Skip Schumacher. You don't want to face Todd Frazier here. And he misses. That could be a costly walk. His first of the night. Now you have to face an all-star. He has had Frazier lunging a couple of times tonight. Two ground balls to Ian Desmond. He's had a big scuffle out of the break. Two for 21 since the All Star break. And you wonder if they anything to do with Monday night in uh, Minneapolis? I don't know. Makes you wonder. I, I wouldn't know unless they had a bunting competition. <laughs> <laughs> now that would get some TV ratings. Oh, the yeah. bunt, the bunting derby, the bunt off. I'd watch that. But it would. It, there's no way it could be a three-hour show. Oh, that, be, that thing had to be over in 30 minutes. It would be good if they blindfolded you, lit you on fire, and let some lions go, maybe. Taking it to a disturbing whole new yeah, level. I mean, that's the only way a bunting contest would be good. If he was healthy, you could put Ryan Zimmerman halfway to third base and see who could bunt one to actually get on base. Still not exciting. first guy to get on wins. Still. Ryan would throw them all out. Still. One-one to Frazier. Jammed and he fouls it. So close. It's a good pitch. Mercedes, and we've seen that pitch called a strike several times tonight. It's a little slider right there. Good frame in the zone. Mm. Missed Almost it. the entire baseball inside the box. Time given. Looked like it was requested by Wilson Ramos. Long look. And an off speed pitch for the strikeout. 
Tanner Roark continues to deal in Cincinnati. Bryce Harper may have kept the Reds off the board with Hamilton running, lining this one to left. One of Bryce's best plays of the year. Tanner Roark loved it. Rest of the inning, he did his part. Baseball on Matson brought to you by Coons. When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. Beautiful evening in the Queen City of Cincinnati along the Ohio. Heading downstream toward Paducah. We're going top seven. It'll be Harper, Ramos, and Walters and what they've done career against the Reds. Zach Walters has even faced them five times in three games this year. Bryce has checked in with a base hit and a walk tonight. And Wilson Ramos, two knocks. So this is a pretty good six, seven, eight combination that right hander Sam LeCure will have to deal with. He'll make his 39th appearance, 350 ERA, 31 Ks in 36 innings. A two seam fastball at 87, curveball at 73, changeup at 80, and an occasional curveball at 79. Bryce Harper one for two single run walk. Well, you could see that in his glove. You see the spike curveball right there. You could mm -hmm. see a knuckle on the baseball and you knew it was coming. Well we did. Bryce couldn't tell. Bryce Harper. One for three career against the right hander. Showed bunt drew in Frazier but he took a strike. O2. They're going to jam him here. And it's in the dirt down there. Inside. Four one Nats. They've out hit the Reds 11 2. Pretty good one two pitch just missed inside. Padres by the way five nothing in Atlanta now. And a liner right over the dugout. Looks okay. That swing looks all right, right. Yeah. People were telling me on Twitter during the break that if after you have that surgery, even if you roll your wrist, you can feel it in your thumb. On a ball up and away. Harper couldn't reach it. 
One out, seven to it. For every Nationals walk here first, Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes 50 bucks to support girls on the run DC. The Nationals have drawn 307 walks for a total of $15,350. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Wilson Ramos, two for three. Eighteen games since coming off the disabled list and hitting around 360 over that time. Big sweeping curveball from Sam Lecure. Target away. Pretty good extension by Wilson Ramos to get a piece of that. He'll chase down with two strikes. That's really the only glaring hole I've ever seen in Wilson Ramos's swing. He'll chase off speed down, kind of chop it into the dirt with two strikes. Other than that, he handles pretty much everything else. Four eleven O Nationals, one two O Reds. Total command by Tanner Roark has put Washington in this situation with some timely hitting. And a one two, and Ramos not trying to pull those outside pitches now, just taking them out of play to the right side. The entire at bat from Nissan, everything away. And then he gets one on his hands and he fouls away. I feel foul ball coming this series, by the way. You get him up here? Did we get him up here? We could, yeah. It's, we're not that high. I remember. But to be honest, we really have not been close in a in about two years since our hot streak in 12. Yeah, we were on fire. Then they started playing us different shifts. We haven't had one since. Suddenly becoming a very good at bat by Wilson Ramos as the count goes 2-2. Four one Nationals. And a great take on a breaking ball to fill the count. Yeah, so surprised he hasn't gone down there earlier. That's where you can get Wilson to chase on occasion, but now he's got him set up. He's seen everything. Holds up right here on the ball down. Good check swing. Yeah, kept those hands out in front. If he throws him a fastball for a strike right here, it could be loud. Now another breaking ball. Ramos strikes up. All right, it's time for your sawed off Jason Worth promo. Here it is. I think I saw a picture of him online today, actually in the hotel in bed, sleeping, that he's finally made it to Cincinnati. So you can follow Jason Worth. By hashtag Worth Goes Gnome on Twitter, but August 5th, that's a big one, folks. That's the one everybody's been waiting for. 705 start. First 25,000 get mini Jason Worth. I would love to hear the conversation 
by whoever had to go to Jason and say, hey, are we okay doing a gnome of you? He doesn't care. <laughs> he likes it. I know, but somebody had to ask, didn't they? Uh, Jason, we got something we'd like to talk over with you. Well, what is it? Oh, yeah, garden gnome? We want you to be a gnome. Those th I'm telling you, those things are hotter than bobble nets. Watch. Yeah, I saw one in Colorado. They did one for Nolan Arenado. Brian Wilson had one in San Francisco a few years back. Everybody wanted that. I'm telling you, it's a big deal. Zach Walters, one hopper. Pena knocks it down, and LeCure wins the race to the back. Nationals go one, two, three for the first time tonight, and it doesn't happen until just before the Hyundai seventh inning stretch. Dancing waters in Cincinnati, but really on the banks of the Ohio, it's been all Nats tonight. No hitter if it wasn't for Billy Hamilton and Ryan Ludwig. And you talk about a game of inches. Here's the first hit. That was in the top of the fourth inning. Great effort by Ian Desmond, and we hope he's okay. He's playing hard once again. And then the check swing, excuse me, infield single off the bat of Ryan Ludwig. Those are the only two hits of the game for the Reds. So you talk about a game of inches. We'd be talking about a potential no hitter here. With a play here and a play there, heading into the seventh. Ludwig Bruce Mezzarocco for the Reds. Six innings, 82 pitches, 50 strikes. Here comes Tanner Roark. He's got Ludwig way out ahead. First pitch changeup. Yeah, you just have to sit in the zone. And even if you sit in that zone and you get the pitch in that zone, it's been so sharp tonight that it's still going to be yeah. a tough go for you. As it's it the time zone he's got messed up for them. Oh he has really upset everybody's timing tonight. I'm looking fastball. Got it. He wasn't. That's why he took it right down the middle. Oh, two. Tanner, by the way, has gone six innings at least. For the 15th time this year, and that's five in a row. He's trying to go seven or more for the ninth time. And he's done that three games in a row. And for those of you that might be new to baseball, most major league hitters guess until they get to two strikes. But it's it's an educated guess based on what he got you out with last time or what you you know hit in the gap last time. So you go up there, it's it's more of a game plan with a guess. So you step in the box and you say, I'm looking fastball right here. And, or I'm sitting on a curveball right here. You don't just flip a coin and say this is what I'm looking for, but you guess. All good hitters guess. Yeah. And when you get your pitch, you get on it. And it's the pitcher's responsibility to disrupt the timing when you do guess right by the sequence of pitches throughout the game. But tonight with Tanner Roark, 
I mean, good luck if you're guessing because he's just throwing everything but what you're looking for. Yeah. And Wilson Ramos in great sync tonight. 2 2 pitch. That's a swing. No appeal needed. Home plate umpire Mark Carlson punched out Ryan Ludwig. Strikeout number six. But watch his body right here. So Ludwig has been made aware of the fastball in. He's looking fastball in. Watch his lower half kind of leave right here. He's looking fastball in. Then it's away on the other side and it's slow and he can't get to it. And he decides, well, I made a bad decision. I was looking fastball in. So he was still guessing with two strikes, but he guessed fastball in based on the lower half spinning out of there the way it did. They're all guessing wrong. Curveball upstairs to Jay Bruce, who has struck out, fly to left. I still do it out of habit up here every night. And sometimes I talk about it, sometimes I don't, but it's just so ingrained in my head of doing it for so many years. You just sit up here without looking at the signs and you know, what would I be looking for right here? Yeah. I'd be sitting soft right here. Anything soft. Line drive. 93 in her half, but he broke his bat and Jay Bruce is 0 for 3. All right, here's your fan photo. I promise you every night's brought to you by AT&T. Is that the big tent over on the first base side of our ballpark? Yeah, it is. I think they're inside having a little right there. time with everybody. Nice. Yes. Very good. We're, that's our that's our latest thing is trying to guess where the fans are. I like it because didn't we have one uh, from another ballpark the other day? Well, I'm running out of silly names and I feel like a beard is appropriate tonight. Tanner Roark's beard has its own Twitter account now. So that's good. He thought that was funny on the plane the other day. Mezzarocco for two and that hits him. Reds have their second base runner since the fourth inning. They've come on a walk and a hit batter. Brian Pena hitting the ball to Zach Walters twice, a ground ball, a soft liner. Left side base hit. Their third hit of the game. And it took them three innings between hits. It'll get down to the number eight man, Zach Cozart, now. I just saw Drew Storm go big time scramble around the corner, jumped on the mound, grabbed the ball to get loose. Crowd anticipating some fireworks after the game tonight, filling this ballpark and making some noise. They haven't had many opportunities tonight. Well, you're doing a couple of things here. You know, if you're Steve McCaddy and Matt Williams, you're seeing Tanner get a little bit tired right now. And you're also giving him a little breather, slow the game down, probably be his last hitter. This gets Drew Store loose in the bullpen, lets him get hot. So this is stall tactics, rest tactics, and slow the game down and get get it out, get your ball club back in the dugout and shake some hands. Yeah, Tanner is due to lead off in the eighth. Came into this inning with 82 pitches, but it's been a long frame for him now. Start is fouled out to third and struck out. Yeah. 
And a bouncer. Oh, Rendon, what a pick and an easy throw to second. Anthony Rendon with an outstanding play to his left. Well, an outstanding play, and he also knew his runners. He knew that Pena was the choice at second base versus Kozart at first base. And you see him peak right there to first. He knew that Kozart could run, and Pena couldn't. Great play, great decision, and a nice outing from Tanner Roark. Once again, my goodness, is he good. Copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. <laughs> Tanner Roark says, hey, I'm hitting. Uh, Steve McCanny says, sorry, you're done. And I think Tanner already knew that. <laughs> that's a guy that doesn't want to come out of the game. I love it. Oh, that's you gotta love stuff. it. Try to sneak up there and get an AB and stay in the ball game. Looked out the corner of his eye, and Matt Williams said, "Uh-uh, sorry." What an outing by Tanner Rower. Seven innings, a run on three hits, one walk, six strikeouts, a hit batter, and we'll have his final pitch count for you in a moment. It'll be somewhere in the mid to high 90s. This is. 27 year old Curtis Parch. Nats have never faced him before. Scott Hairston has with another ball club. So maybe that's why he gets the pinch hitting appearance here. He's the one Nat that has ever faced this right hander. Even Fast. though it's a righty righty matchup. Fastball 95, slider 85, changeup 85. Hairston three for 22 with a homer, four RBIs as a pinch hitter this year. And Tanner Roark, if the bullpen can take care of business, would be the Nats' first 10 game winner. Doug Fister will have a chance to do that this weekend. Tyler Clippard for the eighth. Still a 3 1 ball game, still a safe situation. By the way, 94 pitches, 57 strikes. For Tanner Roark. One one to Hairston. Takes the front door pitch that drops in for a strike. Second time this year, Roark's flirted with a perfect game slash no hitter, I believe, in San Diego on June 6th. That's when he threw the three hit shutout against the Padres. Through eight innings, he struck out 11 Padres, and tonight, I was thinking it. He went seven for the ninth time this year, and that's four in a row. Hairston will pop one straight up on the infield. And all the way back behind home plate, Todd Frazier called off the catcher. And there was another one against the Padres, a complete game shutout where 
He only gave up three hits. That was at home, and then the one on the road against the Padres yeah. tonight here in Cincinnati. So you feel like of all the Nats pitchers, he's flirted with no hitters and perfection the most this season. Yeah, and the great thing about it, it's not by blowing guys away. It's by pitching. Pitching to spots, changing speeds, in and out, up and down. And as you said, working with his catchers, whether it's Lobatone or Ramos, to be unpredictable. Good tempo, good defense, keeps everybody in the ball game. Good support back home. And good support from the home folks. Love it. Keeps the broadcasters in the game, and that's tough. Denard Span is three for four tonight. And hitting a season high 287. 36th. Multi hit game of the year only Hunter Pence of the Giants with 38 has more. How about a four hit night? My goodness. To the gap in right center. And Denard Spann on his way to 290. On base with Rendon seven times so far. Let's check out all four knocks from Denard Spann. Why not? Who's hotter than this guy? Especially in the leadoff slot right now in baseball. Watch Denard hits. We usually show highlights of him running down everything in the outfield, but lately he just playing pepper, putting the ball in play. Not over swinging, even though he has more extra base hits than <laughs> any leadoff hitter in baseball. Just very simple approach right now. And he's locked. 289 the batting average. We'll see how aggressive Matt Williams gets here to try to get this thing to Grand Slam range. Nats lead by three in the eighth. Clippard warming up. Four hits on Wednesday, four hits here on Friday. He would have four hits yesterday, but there wasn't a game. It's his 20th time he's had four hits in his career. Wow. Over 20 ball games now. He's hitting around 380. Ton of hitting room right side for Rendon, who's gone up the middle and the left field for his two hits, plus a walk. Table setters, one of their best games of the year tonight. Rendon will pull it. Frazier, Schumacher turning the 5 4 3, but skip Schumacher because Span was all over him, threw the ball away. Well, you mentioned early on that stats are stats that the Reds' defense was one of the best in the league, but when you don't have Joey Votto and you don't have Brandon Phillips, you have double plays like this. And Skip Schumacher, very adept second baseman, no knock against him. I don't even think that was a hard slide by Span. You just have to clear yourself as a second baseman and give yourself room so you don't even have to worry about contact. But a guy that plays the outfield, the infield a lot. Wasn't able to turn that one, and Rendon gets all the way to second base. Yeah, 5 4 in the fielder's choice. Air on Schumacher, his second of the year. Keeps hitting alive for Worth. Pick your poison here for the Reds. Righty righty with Worth or LaRoche, who's been on three times tonight next. So they want this inning to end right here. Okay. Yep. Three no. We know. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Go ahead. I think he's sitting over 600 on 3 0 count for his career.
not even thinking about swinging at that. Another inning with the Nats have at least two men on. And a big spot for Adam LaRoche. Fans, you can follow every Nationals game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look ins, instant replay scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Download on the App Store, visit Nationals.com today. Well, here's a number for you. Eight consecutive games now, the Nationals have at least 10 hits. Eight in a row. Only other time was back in 05. From May 2 to May 10, when they were in the middle of that. Well, right on the verge of that streak where they were just winning almost every night. Boys are raking. We said in the open in Colorado that this was a trip to get right if you're a hitter. I mean, what two better ballparks to hit in than Coors Field and Great American Small Park? And LaRoche goes 2 0. The only thing you were wondering in this series was with the Reds pitchers. Yeah. Neutralize that fact that the Nats are swinging the bat so well. Well they say good pitching stops good hitting but what stops great hitting. Great. Maybe nothing great pitching. Ten hits at least eight consecutive games. Still you need a few more runs. Well, LaRoche has driven in his 52nd tonight. He's walked double and single. Shift is on in the infield. And right now, Curtis Parch having a hard time throwing strikes. He walked Worth on four. LaRoche 3 0. Desmond on deck. Even with Ryan Zimmerman out. A scary lineup. I'm telling you, get it down early, cheat for a fastball, and try to catch it out front. Make it a seven to one game in a heartbeat. And LaRoche thinking right along those lines. 98. 98, Four one Washington. Two on two out top of the eighth. Clippard ready when needed. And LaRoche takes one in there counts full. In a ballpark with gaps not that big. It helps for the runners to get that head start. Of course I'm thinking two runs here. Thinking one run, important to get that start if one's hit right at an outfield. Jay Bruce by far their best arm out there. And LaRoche will follow it straight down. Adam LaRoche scorches that ball. Schumacher able to keep it close. That ball was really smoked. And the Nats have stranded two more. They've left 12, but still lead by three.
the achiever in you. And by your local D.C. area Land Rover retailers. Visit DCAreaLandRover.com for special lease and finance offers. Beautiful night for a paddle boat ride down the Ohio. It's all Nats. Pitcher spot due up. They'll bat Chris Heisey against Tyler Clippard in his customary eighth inning hold'em situation. Boy, I think because the Nats have 12 hits and the Reds just three, that you can really get lulled into the sense that this game is over based on the hits. But this is still a three-run ball game. This is still a small ballpark. There's some work to be done. Absolutely. Well, Tyler, 46 game. The All-Star type 193 ERA. Right-handers not hitting him. Chris Heisey is 0 for 3 a career against him with two strikeouts. And he's in relief of the brilliant tonight Tanner Roark. Trying to bunt for a hit goes foul. Not a bad idea by Heisey. It's hard to come by for the Cincinnati offense tonight. Well they need base runners. And He's trying to jump aboard with Billy Hamilton for the middle of the order. Brian Price said, hey, we're not doing anything well. He, he didn't miss words the other day when they lost their sixth straight. He said, we're not playing good baseball. We need to clean it up and figure things out. Paraphrasing, of course. Yeah. I mean, the Reds were right behind Milwaukee, right there with the Pirates and the Cardinals going into the All-Star break. Suddenly, you look up and you're six out. I like that. A lot of managers will say, well, you know, we playing a good team and we played okay today. No, he just said we need to play better. It's obvious in every facet of the game. Pitching, defense, and obviously offense. Clifford has high ZO2. Guys got seven pinch hits this year, a couple of home runs. And the change up sitting high. Tyler's last outing, a scoreless eighth inning Tuesday night in the Nats 7 4 win at Colorado. Got him with a changeup, 79, even slower than usual. One out. They went with the invisible, as Drew Storm calls it right here. Just disappears on Heinze. The Bugs Bunny changeup, as I always refer to it. I thought one of the interesting things Clip said after going to the All-Star game was, you know, not about the fluff, but about talking to other relievers in the bullpen about their routines, what they throw, grips on pitches. You know, when you're with the best relievers in baseball, how valuable would that be? Yeah, you're playing each other. Guys aren't too uh, willing to share information, but at least for a couple of days, your teammates. Rendon, he got him. He was charging on the pitch. And he made a brilliant play to throw out Billy Hamilton. Wow. The Nets defense tonight spectacular. Well, it's been spectacular for about the last 50 games. And look at where Rendon's playing. He squares. Watch the reaction top of your screen. And there's a little hesitation. Do I let it go foul? Do I get it? But Rendon says, I got him. Fastest man in baseball, not a problem. It's between he and D. Gordon. Flip a coin in my book. A nice play by Rendon. I mean, feet in front of home plate to get Billy Hamilton. What a play. Here's Skip Schumacher. And somewhere I think. I believe Ryan Zimmerman smiling. Watching a teammate make a play like that. And that's all he really has to smile about right now. We hope that he gets well soon. Absolutely. Missed in so many ways on this ball club. Here's Skip Schumacher over two with a walk. And he'll hit one to center. Schumacher will be 0 for 5 career against Tyler Clifford as Denard Spann went back and grabbed it and a 1 2 3 by the All Star setup man going to the ninth. The Honda do ups for the Nats. It'll be Desmond, Harper, and Ramos. Ian Desmond still hunting that first hit tonight after a white hot series in Colorado.
to the three game weekend series tomorrow night. Great pitching matchup. Gio Gonzalez is 2 0 career against the Reds with a 1 ERA. Johnny Cueto, one of the hottest pitchers in baseball, with the Nats beat him back in May. He's 10 and 6, fourth best ERA. 330 Nats extra on Masson. FP and I join you for the booth at 4 o'clock straight up. To the top of the ninth now. The Nationals still looking for that add on run or two. And they will face Carlos Contreras. More on him in a moment. Well, maybe it'd be a home run, and maybe it'd be for Lexus. Washington, D.C. Lexus dealers are donating $250 to the Children's National Medical Center for every Tater and Nats player hits this season. So maybe we'll see one right here off the bat of Ian Desmond. Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. Carlos Contreras. <laughs> First pitcher since Rob Dibble back on July 11 to strike out the side on nine pitches. Dibble had done that back in 89, had not been done by a red since, and he takes on the Nats here. The ninth and the Nationals have never faced him. Yeah, fastball 93, curveball 80, change up 86. That's 23 from Santo Domingo. 511, 207, a six plus year minor leaguer. Ian Desmond, 0 for 4 tonight. Lays off the breaking ball. Counts even 1 1. Got that one higher and in the zone. And a fastball up strikes him out. A rare offer for Ian Desmond tonight. Price Harper looking for a two knock night. Try to turn that one for three into two for four. You think he'd get a fastball? He's got some heat. 93 with movement. Nationals trying to win their 56th game of the year on a night when they're playing their 100th game. That one bouncing way out in front of the home plate. They're in the top of the eighth at Atlanta. Padres five, Braves one. We don't see an umpire get smoked like Mark Carlson just did right there. Shook it right off like it wasn't a problem. He didn't show much reaction earlier when that foul tip went off his mask. You also don't see many curveballs like that at the major league level. Bryce Harper pulls it foul. By the way, that was a seven pitch, five strike, one, two, three, eighth inning for Tyler Clipper. Getting the guys right back into the batter's box. One and two to Harper. Way outside. Rafael Soriano. 23 out of 26 in saves. Game about nine minutes away from the three hour mark here in Cincinnati. The Nats got three in the fourth on RBIs by Walter Spann and Rendon. Another run on a LaRoche base hit in the sixth. Pitching perfect tonight, nearly. Roark and Clippard. Defense airtight.
Big crowd today, 38,812 here at Great American Ballpark. Antip anticipating some fireworks after the game, but not many for them so far here. And Bryce couldn't reach it, 94, with some cut on it away, two down. That's the one thing I've seen different, and that's because, you know, we talk about all the time coming into the season right now, if you're Bryce Harper with that thumb, maybe not at 100% off the surgery. You know, you've seen Bryce get tricked before, but very rarely can you blow a fastball by a healthy Bryce Harper or a Bryce Harper that's been playing a lot. That's something that's going to take a minute. And, you know, there's nothing to panic about. It's going to happen. It just hasn't happened consistently yet. Wilson Ramos. Well, I can see where this guy could strike out of sight on nine yeah. pitches. This guy, he's got a good one. He's got to lay off that 50 foot curveball. Or whatever that was. That backed up. It looked like about a foot. Live arm. Is 23 years of age. And Carlos Contreras in his seventh professional season. Fifteen miles an hour, sixteen miles an hour slower. <laughs> Makes you wonder why he's been in the minor leagues for so long, but you look at his career strikeout to walk ratio, fewer than two to one. Yeah, he looks like at a young age he could have been a snowball fight guy. Just chunking him wherever. First professional year, 17 strikeouts, 30 walks. You're right. Yeah, that, that's beyond <laughs> snowball fight. Ramos a tapper left side. Todd Frazier. And here we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Rafael Soriano on. He'll face 3 4 5. Frazier, Ludwig, and Bruce in a 4 1 game. Single it was after he gave up a broken bat job to Billy Hamilton, a check swing job to Ryan Ludwig. But you know, everything working pick a pitch, any pitch, and any count. That's exactly what he was doing. Video game like stuff from Tanner Roar here tonight, just pounding the strike zone with all four pitches. And the Reds had none idea what was coming. But the execution of the game plan for me tonight amazing. Defense good too, and then like it always is behind any pitcher that works fast and throws strikes. Yeah, that was the last out behind him in the seventh on that play by Anthony Rendon. Danny Espinosa at second base for Zach Walters as we go bottom nine. You know what that means? Soriano looking for his 24th save and 27 opportunities. It's his 40th appearance and a 115 ERA. 
Yeah, four seam fastball cutter slider. And last time out against the Rockies, he had a little two seam runner going back the other way. And when you face a guy and everything's going one way, the slider's going one way, the cutter's going one way. If you can have that two seam fastball that comes back into a righty, that becomes a big weapon for Soriano and keeps hitters off the slider cutter combination. Todd Frazier, career 0 for 2 against the Nats closer. Talked to Steve McCaddy about it today, and he said he just got inside a few fastballs, but it wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. And that Soriano read swings, and if he sees somebody leaning out there, he can go ahead and sink it on his own. On a pitch up, it's fouled back. Defensive hacks from the Reds hitters tonight, and I'm not talking about with two strikes right. early in the count. And that tells me that the team is really searching. And when your team's not swinging it, everybody's trying to do too much. And Swing and a miss on a slider up and in. Frazier tried to get there. Big out to start the ninth. It just snowballs. You know, I've been a part of offenses. You're in the clubhouse, guys are talking to each other, saying, you know, we got to get it together. We got to figure this thing out. You go up there, you start pressing. But I've seen a lot of Reds hitters look in, swing away tonight. I've seen a lot of Reds hitters look away, swing in tonight, and get jammed. And this is before two strikes. You know, before two strikes, there's two pitches to hit you know, your pitch or you lay off your pitch. And the Reds really are just kind of swinging. And you could tell they're scuffling big time. Soriano feeling good about that slider tonight. Ryan Ludwig career against him. One for six with a double. And a ball popped up right over the top of us. Gio Cueto tomorrow afternoon. That's extra 330 first pitch. About 10 minutes after four from Johnny Cueto. Count back even now, 2 2. If you're wondering how you get out of something like that as a ball club, you know, from a hitter standpoint, keep it simple. See ball, hit ball. Trying to put too much into it, not overwork, maybe not even take batting practice. You go the opposite of what you think you can do because when you're in team wide funk, sometimes you work too hard and you're ingraining the bad habits that you already have because you're working so hard trying to get out of it and it makes the slump even longer. Just grab that bat, go up there at 7.05 or whatever time the game starts and see what happens. It, it's the reverse of what you would think. You know, you make it to the highest level, it's because you work real hard, you're competitive. But sometimes backing off and trying to simplify things and not working so hard is the way to get out of the slump. Slider low, three and two. Because this game will drive you nuts. It really will. Jay Bruce on deck, payoff pitch. Soriano misses way up and in. 
Cincinnati with its sixth base runner of the night. And Jay Bruce over three will step in. Bruce career against Soriano one for two with a double. Hey, interesting note on Denard Span tonight. Back to back four hit games had not been done by a Nat since 07. And Dimitri Young is in the ballpark tonight to witness it. Well, half of Dimitri Young is. <laughs> you would not believe Dimitri, folks, if you saw him. He's lost over 100 pounds. He looks fantastic. The uh, Urban League is in town for a big meeting, and Dimitri is here working with Urban Youth. In amateur baseball, helping kids all over the country experience this wonderful game. He's doing great. Wanted us to say hi to all the Nats fans who liked him so much. One ball, one strike. Soriano having a hard time getting over the top of that fastball. And the first Nat to do it was Brad Wilkerson back in April of 06. Consecutive four hit games. It's impressive. Running fastball, 91. His stuff doesn't look that hard or that lightly, but the swings and misses he gets, impressive. Look at his hand right there, like that one slipped. Yeah, his appearance most recently, Tuesday night, Colorado, following Clippard for his 23rd save and that 7 4 win over the Rockies. Another 3 2 pitch. Swing and a miss on a ball in the dirt. First base occupied, no need for a tag. Two down. See that's one of those things you go over the scout report and you see maybe a stat that Jay Bruce swings 3 2 70% of the time. So that means you don't necessarily have to throw him a fastball even though you're up by three runs. He goes with a 3 2 slider and Bruce over the top. But you saw Soriano snatch the ball back from Ramos. He's upset with himself. And he's fired up right here. Here's Devin Mezzarocco. 0 for 2 career against Soriano. Four one Nationals that ran that run back in the sixth that add on RBI by LaRoche looking huge. And the count 0 2 now is Mezzarocco totally out of whack. Just fishing for something upstairs. That's another example of what I'm talking about tonight a, a defensive swing with only one strike in between. Nationals at strike away from a possible two and a half game lead in the East. Slider and a good job by Mezzarocco of laying off that. Great formula for the Nats. Starter went seven, Clippard set it up. And a ball hit to right center. Long way for Span. He will not get there. It'll bounce up into the bleachers. It's a 4 2 game. And Mezzarocco stops at second base. And the Reds will get the tying run into the batter's box. Well, the Nats caught a break because the ball bounces out. Ryan Ludwig has to go back to third base. So, second and third. Oh, you're right, two yeah. Sorry about that. 
And I thought this one was out of here. Good effort by Denard Spann. He was playing on the, set, the shortstop side of second base on the left field side. So a long way to go for that ball. And very rarely do you see Denard Spann leave his feet. Soriano not happy. Yeah, not only Ludwig stopping at third, but Mezzarocco with a ball so far in between the outfielders. Maybe a chance at third base there. And it's up to Brian Pena now with second and third, two outs. Funny catch by Ramos on that slider. Good swing by Mazzarocco to keep this game alive. And the ball popped up. Short right center. Espinosa out. Danny's under it. And the Nets take care of business in Cincinnati tonight. It took three hours and seven minutes. Soriano's 24th save. And the Nationals are two over on the road, and they are 12 over 500. They yeah, won eight of their last 11 road games, so the Gray Unis treat the Nats well. They come into Cincinnati and take the first game of this big weekend three game series. And Tanner Roark once again getting the job done. Who's better than Tanner Roark right now? Well, on this pitching staff, nobody, because he is now a 10 game winner. For FP and for Dan Bob Carpenter, the Nats get the weekend off to a great start with a 4-1 win against the Reds. Tomorrow afternoon, it'll be Gio and Cueto. Quite a pitching matchup. This has been a massive presentation. Byron and Ray next with Nats Extra Post Game from Cincinnati. See you later.